Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. As you can tell, I'm not in my normal filming location. I say that as if I have some kind of like setup or studio, I don't. AKA, I'm at a desk today, not on my bedroom floor. But this video I think is really, really valuable and important and I wanna get this out at the beginning of the year. Ever since I put out the video where I was talking about my 2020 like reselling year in review video, I have had so many questions asking about spreadsheets. Don't we love them? And the general question is just like, how did you keep track of all that data? How are you able to report on that a year later? All that kind of stuff. How do you stay organized? And there's nothing your girl loves more than organization. So in today's video, it's going to be different. And I'm going to attempt to screen record my computer screen. And I'm going to attempt to like walk you through how I fill out and set up my spreadsheet. And before we get too far into it, I want you to know that there is going to be a link to this exact spreadsheet in the description box and you can use it for yourself. I'm also gonna be walking you down how to download it, how to edit it yourself and things like that. But if you feel like this kind of setup is gonna work for you, feel free to use it. It's completely free, it's in the description below. But first, I just wanna get this out in the open. Let's just air all of my insecurities real quick. I am in no way technologically savvy, a professional at spreadsheets, not good at giving financial advice necessarily, as is true with all of my videos. I am always sharing what works for me. Is this the best spreadsheet out there? Absolutely not, I know that. I know that for sure. But this is what I've been using for over a year now and it works for me. It's super easy, it's super simple. And the great thing about this template is after you've downloaded it, you can remove things, you can add things, you can completely customize it and edit it to be something that's really gonna work for you and your business. But just a full disclosure, I'm feeling super insecure about this video. With all my videos, I try my very best to like really research, really get my facts in order, really have everything like set and ready to go. But with something like a spreadsheet, I don't know how to make spreadsheets work for me in the most efficient way possible. I'm just being real about that. All the tools, all the functions you can do to have things like add up and average and calculate, not my thing. If that is your thing, maybe this is not the type of spreadsheet for you, but this is like bare bones as basic as you can possibly get. I just wanted to put that out in the open before we get started because I can just envision the comments now of people like correcting my way of doing it or like telling me that I'm being so inefficient or whatever. Here's how I do it, take it or leave it, okay? And with that, let's just jump right into it. I'm going to screen record my computer right in front of me so you and I, were gonna be walking through every single piece of this together at the same time. I'm gonna be uploading this screen recording recording footage as the primary thing on the video. I might be like way up in the corner somewhere at some point if there's room for me. But if not, that's okay because we don't care about looking at me, we care about this spreadsheet. So let's get going. First things first, when you go down to the link, it'll send you to this exact spreadsheet right here. What you're gonna wanna make sure right up front is that you are signed in to your Google account. You will not be able to make edits to this or to copy this if you're not signed in. So make sure you're signed in up here. Next thing, you'll notice right here, it says view only. So right now, if you were to type on here, nothing would happen. And that's good because you all have the exact same link for this spreadsheet. I don't want anybody to type in their information and have other people access it. So, so right here in the first row, it says to edit, you're gonna go to file and then you're gonna click on make a copy. This is where you can name it whatever you want. Just click okay, it'll open up in a brand new tab. This is your spreadsheet. You can type whatever you want into this and nobody else is gonna see it. This is yours. You can edit, you can customize it, you can add, remove. It's all private, it's just for you. What I'd probably recommend first is delete delete this first row because that's really annoying to look at. I'm gonna reduce the size of this so we can get it all in one screen. But first, let me just explain kind of the sections of this. Like I said, you can change the color, you can change the theme, whatever you wanna do. But I have it broken into a green section, a yellow section, and a red section. That's kind of intentional and they kind of mean different things. So. Up here in the green section, this is where you're gonna put all of your items that have already sold, AKA they're green, they're good, you've made your money on them. Down here in the yellow, this is where you're going to keep track of all of your inventory. And so I made it yellow because it's like, these are the things that are going to become money in the future. They're going to become profitable. Down here at the bottom in red, these are your expenses. This is things like shipping supplies, printer supplies, all that good stuff. That goes down here in the red because that is just straight up expense. Additionally, this top row up here, that's a frozen row, so when you scroll down, it'll keep those labels on the columns for you. And the point of that is when the spreadsheet gets super, super long, you'll still be able to see those labels on each column. So let's just walk this through step-by-step step, giving you some examples. The first section that we really care about is this yellow section. So every time I come home from the thrift store and I've double checked everything, I've washed everything, I know that it's ready to list, this is where I'm gonna put it into the spreadsheet. So for example, let's say I have an American Eagle sweater 
So you'll put American Eagle under the brand, sweater under the item. Let's say that it's gray and a size medium. Let's say I paid $5 for it and I plan on listing it for $30. All of these, the selling price, the fees, the earnings, the profit, we don't know any of that yet because it hasn't sold, but I do know when I will list it. So I'm gonna list it today, January 19th of 2021. That's all we need to do at this point. For another example, let's say we have some Madewell jeans, they're dark wash, they're a size 30 and I paid $7 for them and I plan on listing them at $40. I'm also gonna list them today, so I'll put today's date. And this yellow section is where I'm keeping track of every single thing that is live and for sale in my closet, as well as stored in my inventory. I wanna talk about this price paid section for a second because you have a couple options. You could itemize it exactly like what I did. So you paid $5 for this sweater and you paid $7 for these jeans. Or you could input your information using the average cost of goods method. So if you have a ton of inventory, you can just highlight this entire section, go down here to the right bottom corner, your average is going to be six. You would change all of these cells to reflect an average cost of goods of $6. Either way is fine, whatever you prefer. And just for good measure, I'm gonna add one extra thing here. Let's say we have a Nike sports bra. It's black, it's a size small. I paid $3 for it. I'm listing it for 20 today. So what I want you to notice now is that right here for the total, there's a total under each section. And for this one, this is showing that our cost of goods for everything in our inventory is $15. It's totaling up everything in this little section right here. Now let's add in some examples for expenses. So let's say we're just starting out. We go to Amazon, we buy some poly mailers. And just for the consistency over here for the price paid, I'll put this over here. Let's say we paid $15 for poly mailers. Additionally, let's say we're at Target and we need some more printer ink. Let's say we paid 30 for printer ink. So that's also gonna total up your expenses right here. Now, down here at the bottom, it'll say total expenses. This number right here is the sum of your expenses and the sum of the items in your inventory or your cost of goods. So in other words, this is gonna be your total expenses. Pretty self-explanatory. Right now, we haven't sold anything, so our earnings are zero and our profit is negative 60. We have spent $60 for our business, but we have not made any of that back at this point. So let's go through that example. Let's say that we sold this American Eagle sweater. I'm gonna copy all this data and I'm gonna paste it right here. And I'm gonna turn it green because we sold it. I'm gonna delete it from my inventory because it's no longer there. Let's say that somebody made me an offer for 25. So the selling price on the listing was $25. Poshmark takes their 20% cut of that. So for fees, we would put $5, which means that our earnings is gonna be 20. So this is the amount of money that we are transferring from Poshmark into our bank account. This last column right here for profit, this is our earnings minus what we paid for it. So this is gonna be 15. Let's say that this sold on the 21st of January, which means that it only took it two days to sell, which is excellent. This is a column that I just added on this year's spreadsheet, the time of sale, because I want to start keeping track of when I'm making all of my sales, if it's the morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, whatever it may be. Let's say these sold at 12.30 p.m. I'm just going to put there for my personal reference. And then the last column over here, you definitely don't need to have, but I like to keep track of sort of the way that I'm making my sales. So in this scenario, she sent me an offer and I accepted. So I'm going to say accepted her offer. And that's all I'm gonna put there. This would be where you put offers to likers, closet clear out, full price sale, whatever. And this is just giving you valuable business information kind of about what your successful sales strategies are. Now let's direct our attention back down to the bottom row, the totals. Notice our expenses are still the same. It's adding up the $45 we spent on poly mailers and ink and the $10 of inventory that has not sold, plus the $5 of inventory that did sell. So all of this in this column is totaled up right here for a total of $60 in expenses, AKA everything that we have invested in our Poshmark business. Moving over to the right, this is our total earnings. This is reflecting right up here where it's saying earnings. This is the amount of money that we have transferred off of the Poshmark platform into our bank account. But then I also really wanna point this out that the profit down here at the bottom of the spreadsheet, this profit is not going to be the same as this profit up here in the items sold category. The profit up here, this is telling us of the items that we sold, what is the profit that we made on those specific things? Down here at the bottom, this is talking about everything in our business as a whole. Right now, as a business, we have only taken $20 from Poshmark and put it into our bank account, but we have still expended 60. So right now we are still in a deficit. We have not made any profit as a business yet. Even though over here, we have made $15 of profit on that sweater. 
I hope that that part makes sense. This is where maybe my ignorance in spreadsheet making comes into play a little bit. I don't know if this is the best way to lay out that information, but it makes sense to me. I think it's incredibly important to have those two profit values separated though, because it's really easy to say, oh, I made $15 on Poshmark so far because I sold that sweater and made a profit of 15. But if you're not doing good bookkeeping and you're not keeping track of all of the materials, all of the supplies and all of the inventory costs, you wouldn't know that you're still technically $40 in the hole. In other words, you have spent more money for this business than you have made back. All right, you guys, that is pretty much it for this part of the spreadsheet. Now here again is kind of where my ignorance in spreadsheet making comes in. Obviously, you're going to sell more than this number of items and you're going to have more items in inventory than the space is given here. So I'm just gonna put some values in here as examples. Let's say you have filled up all of these spaces. And you're like, well, I have more inventory now, so I need to make some more rows. You're gonna go up here to insert, row below, but here's where it comes in, which I don't know how to fix. This value right here, the total, if you'll go up here, you'll notice it's doing sales E12 to E16. That's right here. That's not including that brand new row that we just inserted. So what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to go up here and change it to E17, and it'll show you that it's including all of the values in that section. So now if we put a value here, it's gonna update. Is this highly annoying? Absolutely. Do I know how to fix it? No. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you that I spent at least an hour and a half trying to figure out how to have that automatically update when you insert new rows. I won't bore you with the details, but basically I couldn't figure out on my own, I couldn't find the answer online, and AJ couldn't help me either. So if somebody out there right now is watching this video and you know how to correct this situation, I bet you my bottom dollar, they've already told me about it in the comments. So go down there, check it out. But what I've been doing and what works for me is I don't update those data ranges every single time I add a new row to the green section when I sell something and every single time I add something to the yellow section for inventory. Yes, over time and in the long run, it's going to be important business information for you to know how much you've input into your business and how much you've gotten out of it. But on a day-to-day -day basis, every time I add a new item, I'm not gonna go through the effort of updating those data ranges. I'm just gonna do it periodically. And the last little thing about this page, even though you're gonna be going through and inserting rows here and here and here, this down here, the totals, I don't think that these functions are going to be affected by that. You won't have to go down here and update these data ranges at all. These will just automatically update once you update the data ranges for each row. I am sorry if I'm just boring you to tears right now, but this next part gets a little bit more interesting. So this first page of the spreadsheet is not all that's included here. There's also a tab here for monthly profit and for weekly profit. And these are what I enjoy updating the most. First, we'll just start with monthly profit. So you'll go over here, it's super simple. This is a very straightforward spreadsheet. You'll see first that right here, there's a column for every month. And then right here, there's a column where you can input every month's profit. So this is where I'll put the profit based on the number of sales. So going back here to the sales and inventory tab, putting in some values as an example here. So let's say all of these sold in January. Down here at the bottom corner, it'll tell you the sum. So I know that the profit for everything that was sold in January is $30. So then we'll go over here to monthly. I'll put in my profit of $30 for January and it'll put this point on the graph for you. Now every single month when we update it, these values are going to change and they're going to show you an increase or decrease in your monthly profit, which I just love this stuff. This is so satisfying to me. This is where you're gonna be able to see if you're making steadily more and more profit every single month and if your business is growing and scaling, but this might also show you where you have some dips in the monthly profit and kind of like the roller coaster of it all. Same thing goes for this last tab over here on the weekly profit. So I'll do the exact same thing. I'll go over here and I'll look at the sell date and I'll select everything within that seven day range. I'll find the sum. Then I'll come over here and I'll put that as my profit for that week. Over here in the first column, I've already input for you every single week's dates for 2021. So all you'll need to do is just input your values and then it will plot them on the graph like that. All right, and that is it. I hope this video was successful in communicating how I do this because I feel like some of the things could be kind of confusing. So if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments. As I keep saying, this is what works for me. 
Is this the most efficient, best spreadsheet of your entire life? No. But the reason for me making this video and for putting this spreadsheet out there is just to give you a baseline free resource to get started with bookkeeping if you haven't already. There are infinite, endless numbers of spreadsheets that you can use to manage your Poshmark business and whatever works for you is the best way. The reason that I love this very simplistic spreadsheet is because it keeps all of my inventory in one place, all of my sales in one place. Now, I do have a recommendation for you if you are someone who would prefer something with a little bit more numbers and data and keeping track especially of how much you have to set aside for taxes. I just downloaded this spreadsheet a few weeks ago and I've been loving it so far. It was created by Jen at a British Posher on Instagram and same thing there. She has a free resource for you. If you go to her Instagram account, you can download this spreadsheet for yourself and she also has a little step-by-step -step tutorial on how to fill it out. I believe that it's saved in one of her Instagram story highlights, but I'll just show you that right here. This is what you get when you download Jen's spreadsheet. So hers does a much better job than mine with like all the calculations and things like that. She even has categories here if you sell on multiple platforms. So you're calculating the total number of items sold, your gross sales, all of the fees on every platform, your cost of goods, down here, she's categorized all of your expenses for you. There's even a cell down here where you can calculate your miles driven because that's something that's tax deductible. And then down here at the bottom, it gives you your net sales, your profit, but this right here is the reason I downloaded this spreadsheet because it suggests the amount that you should be withholding from yourself to pay for taxes in the spring. She goes into way more detail on all of this in her Instagram story highlight, so I won't do that right now. But basically my purpose of using her spreadsheet is just to make sure that I am setting aside enough for myself so that I don't get slapped in the face with taxes when that time comes. I am in no way a financial professional, a tax professional, a CPA, nothing like that. But also on Jen's account, she's uploaded a live discussion that she had with Mark at Not Your Dad's CPA. He is a CPA for reseller taxes. And so she did like a Q and A with him on her account. It's uploaded there on her profile for you. And he answers almost every single question that I had about doing reseller taxes. And with that, you guys, that's the end of this video. I hope that it made sense. I hope that you can use this resource if you feel like it'll work well for you. I've said it before. I'll say it again. It is extremely beneficial for you to be keeping track of all this stuff, but do it however you want. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you and I hope that it was helpful and I will see you in my next one real soon.